Hello everyone, welcome to uh, whatever next session this is of Dragons for Every Dungeon. Uh, Dragons for I don't know which session this is because however I cut it up is whatever number we're on right now. So, let's get into it, Janky. Please, take us away, sir. <laughs> That was beautiful intro, Tom. Hello, everyone. Know, right? Welcome, welcome back to the game. Uh, it's been a while since we played, so today like two we're months. going to start our session by uh, recapping what is what has happened thus far. So, how about you all tell me what happened to your characters uh, what happened? What happened? in previous oh. sessions? Well, Reef Reef's ship, the Eternal Spring, docked in Waterdeep. Yes. Um, after receiving a letter from his friend, his longtime childhood friend, uh, mm -hmm. he decided to track down where it was sent so he could go talk to her. He yes. ended up at a hipster tea shop <laughs> yes. that he very much did not enjoy. Um, That's a shame. <laughs> and after uh, getting the manager's attention, I think, or did I just go across the street? I think I might have just gone across the street to the much better tavern that... Oh, so much nicer. Um, there he met the owner and his three party members. Mm -hmm. um, after agreeing to go with these three strange people, a hobo, an elf, and a bunny man. Yes. Um, he uh, left the next day. Well, and... let's let's recap that after we've recapped everyone else's initial. Yeah, we'll, we'll stop, yeah, I'll yeah, stop yeah. there. After so someone the... else, let me, let me know, like, where's your character? Where's your character at? How did you start this journey? Well, Joe, Bruce, no, Sophie, tell me. Bruce, Joe, uh, huh? <laughs> Bruce started his adventure by saying goodbye to his friends, who he founded the Eldrathian Sanctuary Brotherhood alongside. Uh, yes. Rowan and Tara. Rowan Atkinson and Tara Spelling, yes. Uh, at which point, they gave him a gift of the poncho of peace. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Made my way, found a found a little advertisement for a help wanted sign. Part of it, several advertisements, as I recall. Se several advertisements. One of them was Wrapped, help wrapping wanted. wrapping up the poncho. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a newspaper. Uh, several references to other streaming shows. Um, but most and where did that where that advertisement lead you? Uh, this led me to the Wayfarer Inn on the seaward side of Mount Waterdeep. It was signed by an Ardeus Manx, at which point I went and met Ardeus Manx, as well as uh, Reef and the other adventurers. Cool. And that's how that's how you arrived. Uh, Tom, I believe that you also received a, a magic item where you parted company with your previous... Uh, I did. People. I received some very nice runes that helped me do cool divination magical yeah, and don't do anything bad at all. I Noah, I choose uh, to believe yes. that. <laughs> what uh where where have you journeyed from? What are you what are you journeying to? Let us know. Well, first I'm gonna start off by saying I'm definitely changing Cooper's accent. Uh as soon as we start the game. I still have to finish <laughs> formulating it in my head. However, uh, he's just trying something new. He's in a new place. He wants to be like the cool absolutely. new kid. He's reinventing himself for college. And, no, man, it's like it's like when sure you take it's like when you do an internship at Epcot. You just kind of pick up the German accent when you work there for the summer. Yeah, and it's six. Cooper's going to <laughs> yeah. be German. Here's the, thing, yeah. though. Here's the thing, though, Tom. You're not supposed to do that when you were in <laughs> Japan. Yeah, it was a little strange. Why do you think you got fired? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so what actually happened yes. is I am from the far off island of Aster. I am a puka, which is a rabbit kind race. I yes. decided to seek my fortune and glory and spread tales of my people across Faerun. And uh, on my travels, I encountered uh, several allies. Uh, one of which was the, the Emerald Enclave, which has been kind to my people for generations. Uh, mm -hmm. They helped set me on the right path, headed towards uh, Waterdeep. Uh, and along the way, I was accompanied by... Yes. Tithira Strongheart some... and... Yes, Tithira Strongheart. Kredrick Dardragon. Dar yes, Dar an old friend of yours. <laughs> 
I, I don't believe you come need you my... to Waterdeep. I can't read my handwriting. Cadric Dardragon, a purple dragonborn knight, and yes. in parting, he gave me one of his scales, which over time uh, became my bardic arcane focus as I play my loot. Yes. Yes. Your bard cane focus. Exactly. My bard cane then... focus. And then when you arrived to Waterdeep, you and found a I message t- board? Yes, I found a message board looking for interesting either adventures or places to possibly perform. And yeah, uh, mine is in a folder that I do not have access to right now. Found this. Yeah. Same thing I have. Found the same thing. Uh, an Ardeus Manx looking for work. Uh, yes. So I traveled to the, the Wayfarer Inn. The Wayfarer Inn. Inn. And uh, eventually uh, met up with the team that I would be adventuring with. But before we left for that evening, I went back over to the Tea of Life shop and did some slam poetry for a bunch of young, wealthy hipsters that just absolutely enjoyed it. Yes, the nobles thought thought that you were the most interesting entertainment for the night. Uh, So, Kofi... How about you tell us a bit about uh, Sona and her journey that led her to the inn? So, not gonna lie, it's been a while. <laughs> been working on my campaign, so it's kind of like the information's gone. I'm gonna try my best. Uh, but if I recall, oh, I, showed up, check. I, ro- I showed up in Waterdeep mm-hmm. and I was slinking around the shadows. You I can't were. remember to be honest, how I received the letter. Uh, you found it on a, you found it on a, on a, what's the word? You also found it on message board, but you found that yours was written in a very old form of common, uh, that's not used anymore. Um, but I quickly made my way over to the Wayfarer's Inn. Mine was, uh, pretty simple compared to the rest of the party. I walked inside, I was greeted by the owner, Ardeus Manx, Mm -hmm. and I sat down, enjoyed some tea, and awaited my party. (laughs) And it was very simple. (laughs) And so uh, you all came together, you spent a little time together at the table. Uh, Ardeus explained that he needed you to go seek out uh, two friends of his that were on the road. Um, One was named... Oh, now I gotta pull Gun- out. Isn't he? Minus. There's a Gundren rock, rock Seeker. seeker? Yeah. Yes. Sildar Hallwinter. Uh, Sildar Hallwinter, who is an old friend of his from the Griffin Cavalry of Waterdeep, and Grundon Rockseeker, who is a more recent acquaintance. Um, He's a but, dwarf. Yes, also a dwarf. Uh, his brothers and him are treasure seekers. I mean, who uh, would have guessed with a name like Rock Seeker that he was a dwarf? Yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah. And uh, they were delivering tea for Ardeus, uh, and they were supposed to let him know whenever they reached Leyland, which is a city just north uh, of the Mirror of Dead Men, and he never received word. And so he's looking to send people out, and you guys arrived. Uh, <laughs> so before you left, uh, Sona got her gift. She got it from Ardeus. That's a right. stone. <laughs> the Echo it, Stone. Yes, he called it an Echo Stone. It is a, an artifact of the Feywild. Uh, you don't know how he had it or why, but he said that it was a way that you could communicate with him and vice versa. Uh, I will say like one other stuff. thing, uh, just to make sure. Since I don't know if Ophi remembers it. You did roll a, I think it was a history check on him. No, because... it was during a, it was during a trance. I have that yeah. in my notes. Okay, just making sure that you remembered. <laughs> Uh, it has been like two months. So, if anyone's wondering, Tom's been editing the last session. So, <sighs> Tom has a much fresher memory of everything that's happened than literally <laughs> any of us. It's very true. Yes. Yeah, so, you do remember that during a trance, uh, you did see a figure who reminded you of Ardeus in a dream. Um, it went from your time when you still lived in the Feywild. You remember someone who looked vaguely like Ardeus. Uh, so you travel north. You oh, yeah. took the high road, which is the fastest way and also the way that Sildar and Grundon were taking on their journey. 
Uh, and you arrived at a place called Stone Shaft Hold, named for the Stone Shaft clan of dwarves that live there. Uh, why don't you give me a quick brief overview of your exploits at Stone Shaft Hold? I, yes. mean, I, can, I, I can go over it all real quick, because well, I remember. <laughs> well, let's, let's do the Cliff Notes version. Um, Sona got caught trying to steal by the captain of the guard. Yes. Yep. After Reef warned her not to do that. Yep. Uh, and the captain uh, of the guard's name? Dorcas. Dorcas Stoneshaft, yes. Uh, he followed her all day. During that time, uh, Spruce and Reef went and picked flowers for the horses. For, for them Snowdrop and Bluebell. And I think it was Snowdrop who was the asshole. Yeah, <laughs> Snowdrop likes carrots, but did not really like the carrots I got. But still <laughs> ate them. Not a big got, fan of me. You got, you got a shit deal. Yep. Um, Bluebell loves tried, dandelions. We all tried That's to go true. to sleep. And the captain pulled up a stool and decided to watch us. Um, Reef took exception to that and u- m- used magic to make a loud explosion noise. He took more. He got angry, went to approach the cart, and Cooper intercepted. Uh, they had a very poor conversation. The dwarf spat at his feet, and Cooper drew his sword, and it then was arrested and spent the night in, in the dungeon. Well, we all slept peacefully after that. And then That's Reef, about how I remember it. <laughs> and Reef had a very strange experience where something in his rune bag poked him, and then he had a really trippy dream that I spent about 20 minutes this morning writing down to make sure I had it all in my notes. Yes, so. he, had a, he had a very strange dream with lots of strange visions um, of places he may know and places that he may not. Places he'll, right. write, he'll come to know at some point. <laughs> so that that is where we ended the last session. Are you all ready to play some more dungeons for every dragon? Dragons for every dungeon. We'll yeah. get it right at some point. D F E N D. D F E D. We'll get it right at some point. Dungeons and dragons and divins and drives. Yes, dungeons and dragons. And dragons and I would dives. play that game. Dragons for Are every dungeon. Honestly, Anybody. I like this better than actually recording a song. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, Janky. All right. So, <clears throat> all of your noses are filled with the smell of rot and decay as the sea breezes from the Sea of Swords wind and cut their way through the twisted trees in the murky water of the Mirror of Den Men and sweep out to greet you on the high road. Um, the late winter, early spring snow melts from the foothills of the sword coast mountains uh, run down across the road and turn what would normally be a wide dirt path into a muddy hard to navigate and your rickety cart uh, track you frequently get stuck you have to pull yourselves out Um, and as you trundle along uh, where is everyone riding in this cart? I think that Reef uh, Reef is in the back because he gets cart sick yes Um, um, so I'm assuming Chris is driving we woke up, collected Cooper, and just left? Well, no. We'll get to that. You gotta okay. let me tell the story. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Go All ahead. Right. So, Spruce, you're driving, yeah? And everyone else is within the cart. Yeah. So, as you're tunneling along, bouncing, uh, Spruce, there is a, a package sitting next to you that you were charged to deliver before you left Stone Shaft Hold. Uh, and as you bounce along, and the package bounces along beside you, you and everyone else in the cart think back to earlier in the morning uh, when you were still at the hold and uh, the events of the morning. So we go back to that time at Stone Shaft Hold. Um, Cooper, Cooper had spent a long night uh, in the stocks. He's very stiff. Um, but in the morning, not Dorcas, but Bronwyn Stone Shaft, who you may recall was in charge of all of the travelers in Stone Shaft Hold, uh, she arrives to unlock the socks in the morning um, as you guys trundle up in the cart. Uh, and um, she unlocks Cooper. And do you guys have anything that you would like to say as she goes about her business? Ma'am, I am so sorry for the trouble my <sighs> prideful it's... friend has caused you. Um... It's fine, dear. Look, Dorcas has always been a bit of a hothead. All you really have to worry about is uh, not coming back here for maybe like a decade or so. By that time, he'll forget the whole thing. 
and then you'll be welcomed back. But maybe next time, don't try stealing things in the marketplace or, you know, angering the captain of the guards, yeah? That's no fair. promise. Son of well, well, I think okay, I... So... <clears throat> I'm going to choose to ignore that. <laughs> well, I think I have more than a decade to uh, wait out before uh, I can come back here. It's probably not uh, not a visage he'd likely forget. There's a good chance of that, dear. You did pull a sword on him. Yeah. It's hard you to defend you after you pulled a sword on him. I, I tried. I calmed him down. He was going to lock all of you in the stocks, but I got him down to just you, so... My apologies for that, but, you know, be grateful the rest of you. Except I... for you, dear. And she, like, pats Bruce on the arm. She's like, I know you did nothing wrong. I saw you gathering food for your horses. You're such a sweet boy. Oh, oh thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Where is it that you said that you were headed anyway? Someone else want to answer that? <laughs> uh, we, were, we were looking for some friends of ours along uh, the Mirror of Dead Men. Ah, uh, oh yes, yes, the the older gentleman and and Grondin, yes, yes, they had stopped by here, um, perhaps a week or two ago, and I remember that uh, they were headed back up the road. They said that they were hoping to stop at the roadhouse just up the way, before they continued on to Leiden. Yes, yes. Um. Well, I wish that I could help you more with this, but I can't really say much more other than um. Um. How far? How, um, ex sorry, ma'am. Um, you said they stopped at a roadhouse further up. Yes, there there is an old roadhouse. It's uh, it fell out of use a bit since the high road got washed out in what with the mountain erupting on Neverwinter and that whole trouble. Um, how far uh, is that roadhouse from here? About a day's travel. If you get started here in the early morning, suggest you do before darkness wakes up. We'll probably be able to make it there by late in the afternoon, early evening. Thank you very much. Of course. Um, and by this point, uh, Cooper has already been released from the stacks. Uh, she's guiding you out the gate. Uh, you'll remember that there's a, a sort of a drive that leads from the hold over to the high road. She's walking with you. Uh, and once you're outside the city, she says, Now... I will say that I know that Grundon said some things while he was here, uh, particularly that he had planned on going to a small town. Uh, there's a frontier town if you turn west or turn east toward Tribor. Uh, it's called Fandolin. It's it used to be a thriving town of several hundred years ago, but uh, it's a bit of a small mining town now. He's, he said his brothers were there waiting for him and. Well, as it turns out, I, I have a friend there. Uh, she goes by the name of, um, she goes by the name of something that I should have looked up before I started speaking the sentence. It's <laughs> uh, a weird tangent to go off. Yes. Uh, she goes by the name Sister Garale. Uh, she's, she's an elf cleric. Uh, she tends a small shrine in and Fandelver, uh, and Fandolin, and um, I was hoping that you could deliver a package to her for me. She's been complaining, see, that the nights are a bit cold there, so I made this nice quilt for her, and I was hoping you could deliver it for me. Absolutely, ma'am. After the trouble we caused you, we will be happy. I much appreciate it, friends. And I do ask of you, don't uh, lose it or misplace it, please. It, it's a very precious, uh, it's a very precious thing. She's a very old friend, and uh, I would hate for her not to get it. Uh, course, we'll and she very much person. underlines, do not lose. <laughs> oh, one more time. What was her name? Sister Garale. Uh, Sister Garale. <laughs> okay, thank you. Of course, of course. Um, and I wish that there was anything else I could do to help you, but uh, that, that's pretty much all I can do. Um, however, if, even if you're not li even if you may not be welcome in the hold, if you're ever passing this way again along the Sword Coast and you need anything, just uh, send a letter off, and, and if you're passing by the hold, I, I can always uh, 
do my best to help you. Uh, I I know some friends around the area, and uh, they're they're helpful people. And I I could get you in contact with some of them if if it comes to that. Okay. Uh, is there is there anything else the party would like to do before you trundle off down the road? Uh, no, but I have something I want to do while we're on the road. If we, when we get there. Sure, sure. So if no one has any other questions for sister or uh, for uh, Ronwin. Ronwin, Ronwin, man, is the DM? I have to keep track of all these names that I make up, and it's, it's a <laughs> tough thing. All right. I so if no one has short. any more questions for Bronwyn, uh, we'll go ahead and start off on the road. Mm -hmm. So you all are on the road, as I described before. Um, it's a wide dirt track. Uh, but again, this is sur sort of early spring. So a lot of the snow is sort of melting off the foothills. It's running across the road. You come across a few washouts and things. Your tires get stuck. You have to, like, uh, you have to sort of bounce them about. Spruce, it requires a lot of coaxing of Bluebell and especially Snowdrop to get them to pull the cart while the others are pushing just so you can keep going. And ever-present, there is the Mirror of Dead Men, uh, maybe about 100 yards off to, off to the left side of the cart, just sort of looming there. Um, and you can just smell this stench coming off of it, of just like rot and decay and all these terrible things. What would you like to do? Cooper's um, taking travel the road. Uh, right, Cooper's getting... had a hard day. Night. He's taking a nap. Uh, Reef is trying not to be sick in the back, but he is going to do something. I just have to look up to make sure I understand okay. how it works real quick. Spruce, what is it that you're doing in the in the front of the cart while all this is going on? Uh, mostly just sitting there, not really doing much of anything. Hmm. Keeping my eyes out, looking for animals. What, what time of sure. day is it? Sure. Uh, so you've been turtling along since the early... So let's just say that it's the afternoon now. Uh, you okay. think that you'll probably be hitting the, the, the roadhouse soon, um, but you're still just kind of on the road, sort of making your way around this wide curve that goes out around the mirror. Um, to avoid getting sick, and you can tell me if there's something I can do, because I'm, I'm still a little fuzzy on it. Mm -hmm. um, the thing we talked about that the runes can do um, it would cost me a spell slot, but can I do it in the back right now. Um, yeah, yeah, you can cast Augury at any time. Um, now, can you remind me what that's, how that spell works? Because I tried to find it on D&D Beyond, and I could not find it. Yeah, so the way that Augury works um, <laughs> is that you basically ask uh, a question about something that you plan on doing, usually within the next uh, hour or so, and the runes will give you an answer, yes or no. Now, your runes are special. Uh, if you ask them a question, you will turn up three different runes, and um, that will give you some information related to the question that you ask. That Okay, that's exactly what I was hoping for. I already drew the three runes, and I am going to do that. And it does count. I do lose a spell slot for that. Yes, you do. So, so what is the question that you ask? Well, um, I'll, I'm... I'm going through it. As he's going through it, Reef is sitting in the back trying not to be sick because the shaking of the cart is just not agreeing with him and to try to take his mind off of it, he thinks of the only thing that's really nagging on his mind right now and he thinks back to the dream he had. Mm -hmm. So he pulls three, ru three runes cast to cast with it sets them out and just asks uh, he asks for Clarification. He asks what he asks for what he asks for any sort of clarification he can get on it. Clarification on the any dream? part of that dream that he can. He doesn't okay. know. He doesn't understand any of it. Do you need me okay. to tell you which runes I drew? Because I have them. Yeah, you tell me what runes you drew, and I'll tell you what you. Uh, he drew first. He drew. Uh, I have a cheat sheet here, so let me find okay. them. Okay. <laughs> Uh, hopefully they're all on here and I didn't just like find the wrong thing. Oh, uh, here we go. Hopefully. He drew the friend rune. Okay. He drew cloud. And he okay. drew... Uh, what's this last one? Uh, oh, I'm holding it upside down. Uh, he drew frost. Or ice. Friend, cloud, and frost. <sighs> Which 
That's okay. weirdly fitting. <laughs> so so here's here's what you determine off this. So the first thing you do is whenever you draw out cloud, you see that the rune is actually upside down. So mm -hmm. what that tells you is that it's not sky exactly, but it's not earth either. If you'd flip the rune over and you didn't see the rune on the face of it, that would mean earth. But upside down, it's almost kind of like a it it's like the flip side of the sky. And you think that it, at least you kind of remember that in part of your dream, you were in a place that was like a sea, but it was also like a sky. And because of your studies with Regis, you think that it might have been like the astral sea, maybe? And you think that that's what this rune is telling you, is that it's clarifying to you that, yes, this place that you're on, at least this place that you started, was like this astral sea. Now, um, the friend rune, that one you did draw upside down. You only saw the back of the rune and you had to flip it over. So what that means is that there is an enemy uh, somewhere in your future. Um, you don't know what kind of enemy. Uh, all that tells you is that there is something, there is someone who is uh, out to get you. It is specifically you because you drew this rune. So there is an enemy specific to you that is lurking. And it, 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 it's, the dream is like trying to warn you of this. And the ice, the ice you just drew, and it's unclear to you what that could mean right now. Um, but the, on the only meaning you can get out of it is the order that you drew them, which is the cloud, which tells you that you were on the astral sea, this, this friend rune that was in reverse, that, or upside down, that tells you that there's an enemy, and then ice. So somehow the ice is connected back to those other two things, but you don't know how or why. I will, I will say, I will, it went... I drew them as friend, cloud, and then ice. Does that matter at all if it's either way? No, it's fine. Okay. It's just that you know that the ice must be somehow related to the first two in some way. But it, it, it's unclear to you right now how, because Augury is a low-level nation spell, and so there's a lot open to interpretation there. Um, but that's kind of like what you understand of it. Uh, Sona, what are you doing in the course? Um... I think I'm probably just like checking my gear. Maybe if I have the ability to sharpen my my daggers, I would. Hell, sharpen away. It's not gonna cool. get you anything, but you can sharpen those daggers. Yeah. And, and it's it's more of like a. Hair. It's more of just like a, a, ritual thing of me like making sure my gear is ready. That's fine. That's fine. We're just sitting here splitting hairs anyway. So go ahead, split those. Hairs. Cool. <laughs> okay, uh, so you're all doing this, these things. You're uh, um, Spruce, you're trying to guide this cart as it goes rolling along. You're dealing with Snowdrop, who is still, you know, very much Snowdrop. And Bluebell, of course, who's just very sweet and easygoing, and she's very easy to, like, you know, guide. And, and you have this weird dichotomy that you're dealing with. Um, Reef, you're just trying to interpret this dream, and you're thinking on these runes and what they could mean for you. Uh, Cooper uh, is napping and uh, frequently being woken up by bumps in the road and to push the cart because everyone else in this party apparently has nude alarms. So he's like one of the few who can who can help us along. And uh, Sona, you are just uh, going through this daily ritual and this is just kind of like your thing. This is how you find peace, maybe. This is just, uh, this is just sort of... Um, it's a dogma to you, yeah? It, it's almost yeah. like, it, it, it's just, it's what you have to do because this is just what you do. Mm -hmm. um, so you're all kind of lost in your own stuff and doing your own things. And that is when you see this building come up in the distance. Um, and so it's, it's a very simple building. It looks like there is uh, uh, some fortification to it. It looks like parts of it are stone and parts of it are plaster. Um, it was clearly designed in a way that it's supposed to withstand like the the weather of the area because you have the the sword mountains on one side and the mirror on the other, so you get all sorts of like thunderstorms and stuff sort of rolling through this this valley. It's it's clearly meant to withstand like all of these things. Um, the the encroachment of the mirror because the mirror is constantly spreading out, um, and you see that uh, there's a bit of roof around the top, but it looks like the top is open for the most part. Um, and there's a very wide archway that carts and horses can clearly get in and out. And you see uh, a man who is standing outside. 
he has a uh, sort of a greenish grayish tint to his skin, a big guy, and he has uh, teeth that are pronounced. They stick up about maybe an inch above his lip. Um, oh, okay. And they're and they're they're pronounced, but other than that, he pretty much just looks like anyone else that you would meet. Um, and he appears to be talking with someone, and he's holding a clipboard, and he very looks like he very much looks like a man in charge. What would you like to do? Uh, well, is this, is this the way we're supposed to be going? Um, they mentioned yeah. they mentioned a roadhouse that roadhouse that the pair were uh, said to stop. Patrick by. Swayze is there. Yeah, it's it's a whole thing. They said they were going to be stopping by here, so um, we can check to see if they're here um, or if they know if they kept going. Uh, it would be worth it to stop them. Okay. So, are you guys rolling the cart up to this man? Yeah. Okay. So, Cooper's so you're just the cart. still in the back napping, okay. like not actually napping, just sort of like resting his um, eyes. Real quick, gotcha. as we approach, you said he's talking to somebody. Um, what does the person he's talking to look like? Uh, it just looks like uh, uh, th there's a human there, and there's um, a dwarf there. And there's a gnome there. So there's actually three people. Um, and they appear to be holding papers of their own. It's hard to tell from this distance, but it looks like there are like drawings and sketches on them. Um, you do remember that Ardius told you that the high road is under repair? Not, uh, it, it, fell in, it fell into disuse for a very long time. Uh, because you, it, at the very least, Spruce would know and... Um, you would know, coming from Neverwinter Reef, that uh, Neverwinter was hit very hard recently by a series of natural disasters. Uh, and so the city is rebuilding, and um, there is, there's a man, Lord Neverember, who used to be the open lord of Waterdeep. Uh, Spruce, you remember this. You recall that he was absolutely terrible at his job. Uh, and he moved to Neverwinter, uh, and he's been funding his, his private wealth into Neverwinter to rebuild it. Uh, and he's putting part of his money into the reconstruction of the high road so that trade can easily resume again between Waterdeep and, and Neverwinter. Um, so, so you suspect that the drawings that these people have and the whole nature of this place, you think that it's some kind of like construction crew maybe. Um, it doesn't look like the whole crew, but it's also that winter just ended. So you suspect that they're probably just starting up on work again. They probably didn't do much in the winter. Construction um, season starts once more. Exactly. Yeah. It's that time. Red cones are going down on the high oh. road. Uh, they're rolling out like cement things that make the lanes really narrow. Like you Everything. try to pass people, but you're really uncomfortable because it's really narrow. Yeah. It's a whole thing. Everything's going to take at oh. least three more days to get to. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh my God. It's going to be the worst. They're, they're, they're going to be detour signs they put up, but they're not clear. You don't know where you're actually supposed to detour around to. It's, it's sure. a whole thing. Oh, There's just an God. arrow pointing off in some direction. You don't know how far down it is. There's an arrow right. that just points straight into the mirror. Right. And at this point, at this point, you're so far along the road, like, why couldn't they have put a detour sign back at Waterdeep? Like, exactly. why have it up here? You're going to have to turn around now. It, okay. It's a whole problem. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> yeah, so, so you come up, you come up to this man. Uh, you come up to this man with, with, uh, these, these teeth, these tusks. And, uh, yeah, he's, he, it seems that he's just giving people directions. Uh, and he sees you approach. Uh, and he sort of waves off the other three, and they kind of go back into the building. And uh, he turns to you with his clipboard, and he just says, Supplies or labor? Sorry. We're just passing through. We're actually, we're looking for someone. <sighs> you know, a Gundren rock seeker or Sildar Hallwinter? They're supposed to have passed through this area with a shipment of tea? I don't, look. I don't pay attention to everyone who comes in at... who are you people if you're not supplies and you're not labor like <sighs> we're on our way to Fandolin where's is great that, are we on the right way? everyone's on their way to somewhere I don't I don't I can't we're just people hired to find these two people who disappeared on this road 
We're just looking for him. We just need any sort of information that you could give us. Can you just please try to remember? Can I try to, in, like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Can I, is there a way I could force him to make a history check to try to remember? Is there a way I could do that? No. Possibly persuade him to do it? No. There is, there is no function that lets you just persuade a person to make an answer check. Like, uh, try. <laughs> Look, I have a lot on my plate right now. If... <sighs> what is it you that you need? Are we on the right way to Fandolin? That's what we're doing right now. Uh, yeah, if you keep Going up the road, you're going to get there eventually. You just have to go up the high road, then get off on the Tribor Trail, and that goes to Fandolin. But I'm telling you right now, you're not going to get through this stretch of road. I don't even know why you came up this way. Not with that. The answer. winter washouts have completely ruined the road. In fact, There's... I just told you... Wait, hold on. The men you're looking for, one of them was a dwarf, yeah? Yeah, yeah, that was uh, Gundren Rockseeker. Yeah, there was a dwarf and an uh, uh, old human fella. Yeah, that yeah? sounds... That's, I think that's what they look like. That's yeah, about it. idiots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They came rolling up through here maybe like a week or two ago. And I told them, I said, look, the snows have melted. The, the mirror, it has engulfed the road. My engineers literally just got here two days ago. They're working through a plan to drain the road right now, but they insisted on continuing up the high road. And <laughs> I, I just, I can't fathom what sort of person would just assume that they could just trudge through anything. It, it's, in, I don't, I, I, it, it's unfathomable. And you can see that he's getting very worked up about this whole thing. Like how ridiculous I, it is that they didn't listen to him because he's clearly used to being listened to. And he's just it. like, I even I gave it. you like good advice, and I I can't fathom. Yeah, yeah, it seems so like he's clearly it was, getting worked out. They probably they probably should have listened to you. Anyway, anyway, we're gonna keep going on because we gotta find him and make our way to Fandolin. So, wait, wait, see ya. Wait, <laughs> gonna I the horses forward. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna stop him. <laughs> just let's go. Okay, so you guys are just gonna keep on rolling. Yeah, we're just gonna ignore him. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to totally go against his advice. Okay. <laughs> we have a job so, to do. We ain't going to stop. <laughs> so it is early evening. It's getting incredibly dark, and he's just like, you're going to die on the road. I'll be fine. I'm resisting, an got, uh, I'm resisting the urge. Supplies. You're not going to die on the road because you're going to run out of supplies. You're going to die on the road because you're going into... Lizard folk territory at night next to the mirror of dead men. It's a little racist. <laughs> <laughs> it's not racist. It's their it's their home. I mean, we're just passing we're just passing through. I don't see why we My engineers just got here. Security isn't coming until tomorrow. Like there's there's no one to patrol these roads. You'd be lucky to make it out with your lives. Honestly, if you're looking for your friends because they disappeared, they're probably dead. How late is it? It's it's like eight o'clock now. Okay, like, so it's it about to like get dark. Dark. Setting. Okay. Yeah. So it's uh, like, look, look, look. I'm a reasonable man. Okay. My cook is here, Gristle Pete, waiting inside. The stable boys are already here. My team's here. We have a few laborers. Just like, just stay a night. Stay the night. Wait until morning. You can leave in the morning. Just wait until daylight. Be smart about this. I can't stand all these travelers who just come rolling through here, doing stupid things. I see them all the time. Oh, but the high road's the old way. Oh, but we're. Adventure. Oh, but we want to see a displacer beast. And then you find their pieces scattered across the road within a couple days. It just provides more work for all of the laborers who are at, just trying to drain the road. At this, Cooper will, at this, Cooper will rise from his, like, 
pseudo nap and just be like, we greatly appreciate your hospitality, good sir. Friends, I may suggest that we just pull off for the night and continue in the morning. I do agree. I do not want to be taken by surprise by lizard Co-workers, beasts. Co-workers, first of all. But I agree with you. Co-workers. I don't like you. I don't like you either. Your I don't like anyone. Is. I mean, that's very fitting. Sonia. I like I everybody. Mean, Sona. Spru- Excuse me. Sorry. I enjoy your company. It's Sona. So not sorry, Spruce. I like I, I like, like Spruce. Yeah, I think we can all agree Spruce is just delightful. Very yes, much so. I, oh, I do believe. <laughs> Loudest chair though. So we'll we'll take you up on the offer, I guess. Um, do we also, have a, does you, does the half for? Is there a place for our cart? Oh, and your name? What was yeah. your name, sir? Luck. Bog luck. And he reaches out to shake one of your hands. Whoever it's closest to him. Alright. Uh, he crushes it just a little bit. Uh, Not intentionally, but like, he crushes it a little. Did did he react at all to seeing a rabbit person popping out from the back of the cart? He doesn't seem particularly concerned. Okay. Because he lives in a in a crappy roadhouse on the side of like a mirror of death. Okay. <laughs> Rabbit kind don't particularly concern him. He takes it in stride. Yeah. Okay. Um. But uh, so yes, there is a place. So if you pull your cart through the gate, you see that it's a pretty wide open space. There are some crates. Uh, they seem to be piled up by um, uh, uh door. Um, there's three sets of stairs that kind of lead to an upper balcony, and you can see all around the outside there are doors, uh, and there are doors along the upper balcony. You suspect that they're all probably just, like, either storerooms or rooms for people to stay in. Um, and, he, uh, Bogluck just tells you, he's like, all right, so if you go up the stairs directly across from the gate there, and he points to the stairs, says, that'll take you up to the kitchens. That's where Gristle Pete is. He'll be making dinner here in a while. It's usually some stew. It's usually gristly. We take what we can get here because we live in the middle of nowhere. Uh, if you want separate rooms, we have enough room right now that we can do that. It'll be a silver piece for each of you. If you want one room altogether, we can do that too. Uh, that'll just be one silver piece for the whole gang. It'll be cramped. But again, you deal with it, because we're here. Uh, if you want to play the story horses for the night, we can get one of the stable boys to look after it. The stables are in the back. Uh, and you see back past the stairs, past all the stairs on the back wall, there's a couple like stable doors that clearly open. Uh, it's like, and we can put your horses up in there. Stable boys are pretty good at the job. Uh, they can take care of things. And... Uh, yeah, just tell me what you want to do room-wise, and uh, we can get all that sold up. Okay, so out of also, there are no locks on the doors, because they tend to freeze. So uh, if you have any valuables, anything you want to keep safe, I have a lock room in the warehouse. Uh, I keep books, so you always get your stuff back. I can lock up anything you need locked up. Uh, there aren't too many people here, but aside from the engineers and Gristle Pete and the stable boys, uh, the five or six laborers that are here right now. I don't really know them that well. I don't know what the demeanor is. I can't guarantee the safety of your stuff. But if you feel comfortable just sleeping with it, hope you don't get attacked in the night, that's fine too. I can get the horses back to the stable boy. <laughs> okay. So out of character here, do we want to do one room or four rooms? I mean, you should do it in character. If y'all want no, to stay together, we probably should do that in character. Never mind. I've already left, and I'm taking the horses. So, all right. Um, so, have... well, yeah. I'll, go ahead. I'm gonna ask these. Two. I'm gonna ask Cooper and Sona. Do we have the money for four individual rooms, or what do you two want to do? I mean, I do. I do. Well. Good, I honestly don't want a room with either of you. That's fair. <laughs> so. Alright, so while y'all work that out, uh, so, uh, 
spruce. You guide you guide the horses through the stable doors. Um, you see that there are four uh, young boys, maybe from like twelve to sixteen, hanging out in here. Um, there, you can see like blankets in a corner, so they clearly like sleep in here with the horses. There are maybe like mm, four or five horses here already, but there's open stables for Bluebell and Snowdrop. That's not a problem. One of the boys runs up to you. He's like, "Hey there, I'm Womp. Can I take care of your horses for you?" Just saying, I gotta write this down. I might be going later. <laughs> how can I help you, sir? <laughs> I need a brush. Yeah, how can Womp help you? <laughs> I need a polish. Oh, Womp, wow, nice to meet you. My name's Spruce. You need a saddle tack? Good day, Spruce. Um, honestly, if these two could just have a nice place to stay tonight, that'd be pretty bad. Sure. Um, if you can find some... Okay, this is this is Snowdrop. Hey there, Snowdrop. Snowdrop, Snowdrop doesn't like a lot of people. Yeah, see... Snowdrop does like carrots. Especially if you got some really nice carrots. So, if you can, get Snowdrop some carrots. Alright, I'll see what I can do. Bluebell. Bluebell's a big sweetie. She just really enjoys... Flowers, any kind. D dandelions are actually her favorite. So if you could uh, mess some of those, must must some of those up for her, she'd she'd really appreciate. It. Sure. And uh, you see that he like goes over to where, and he reaches in. He literally just pulls out a handful of flowers that he picked from God knows where, and he just takes them over and puts them in a feed bag, and then gives the feed bag to Bluebell. It's like, there you go, Bluebell. Hope that you enjoy those. Oh, oh, she loves. <laughs> well, I'm glad. And then he he grabs the reins from both of you. And um, Bluebell, of course, is very easygoing. Snowdrop is uh, Snowdrop and very proud and uh, isn't about it. And he he, uh, he doesn't want to move at all. And then uh, Wump is just like, Oi, Snowdrop, you listen to me here. You're going to get in that stable and you're going to be calm and I'm going to brush you I'm going to take care of your saddle tacking. And then, if you're good, I'm going to give you lots of carrots. Sound good? And then Snowdrop is just like, okay. And then, <laughs> and then he just guides them both into oh, into wow. stables. And he just gets out a brush and he starts uh, he starts brushing them out. Just like, really, so, really where'd you come calling. from? Where are you going? Uh, what you I, I, I can't. What brings you to Connor? Deep. Water deep a little ways back. What deep? Oh, I heard that's a real nice city. I hear that that's a real cool place. I always wanted to go to Water Deep. See, I'm from Tribal myself, so I actually came down from the north. It was really hard to get through the road because it wasn't very nice at the time. But I got down here anyway, and now I live here. And it's all right, but I kind of wish to go back and see my family. And then, uh, and you know, I'd, I'd just like to, you know. Sorry, Water Deep. And then he keeps brushing. <laughs> we're, on, we're on our way up to Fandolin right now. Fandolin? You know, I used to pass by Fandolin whenever I came down through Triboy. It was a really nice town. There weren't a lot of people there when I passed through, but, you know, they were starting to build back up again. It's mine town, I hear. I always thought that mining was really interesting. I wouldn't like it because I have a, a fear of tunnels. I have a bit of claustrophobia. I think that's, that's the word for it, or at least that's what I hear the word for it is. Bogluck has some books he's really learned, and I, I read the word claustrophobia in one of them, and it said fear of small spaces. So I think that's what I got. But I don't mind being in the stables, because the stables are pretty nice. And, the, and the, the roadhouse has an open roof, so I don't really mind that. And I'm kind of free to do whatever I feel like during the day. So I just kind of walk around outside. And it's pretty nice, and I take the horses out to the pasture. I never take them to the mere side, though, because that's dangerous. So I take them up into the hills. And then they just sort of snack on the grass, and they have a good time. And then it's all really good. And it'll get really crowded here, so it'll be really hard to do whenever, you know, everyone's here. But right now, I can just do it. It's really fun. <laughs> Brush. Question. Brush. Question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is this just a very hyperactive kid with a cold, or is this like a young man who's strung out on the the uh, Faerun equivalent okay. of speed? You're not there, so you he's, can't tell. He's not. He's not strung out. It's just like he. He. It's just. It's like a tick that he has. It's like you can see the dirt is like smudged all over his face. Mm. Like clearly, he, he's just one of those kids that like always seems to have something in his nose, so he's always, like, sniffing and, like, mm. hitting it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> allergies, maybe? Uh, yeah. Maybe. It's early spring. Oh. He could have allergies, who knows? He's allergic, he's allergic to horses. He's got hay <laughs> fever. Terrible. Poetic justice. Okay, continue. Oh, I just, I just irony. needed to know. Alright, well, I, I could see you're 
natural. You're natural at this. They love you. Thank uh, you very much, sir. And then he holds okay. out his hand. I'll, I'll shake it. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't touch that hand. Thank you. Oh, oh, you want your money. Uh, <laughs> Just a, a penny if you get to pay, sir. Here's Maybe a bronze. I only have gold pieces right now, and I'll just set one. Oh, well, that's okay. <laughs> and, um, okay. And he just, he like that. looks at it, and he's just like, oh, thank you. And he just starts like, he just starts like, go, he like, actually, he stops brushing. He gets out like a bucket, and he starts filling it with like lye soap. And he's just like, I'm going to give him a real good scrub. I'm going to make them look like the best horses you've ever seen, God, sir. Geez. They're going to be really good whenever you come in. I swear I'll take the best care of them. And they'll be like, you never knew before, sir. They'll be so relaxed and helpful. And, and they'll be oh, willing man. to pull your card as far as you're willing to go. And I can't wait to show you what I can do for you as your stable boy. Oh, that'd be really great. Thank you. Dead Thank you. by morning. <laughs> All right, well, you have a nice night, then. I gotta go. You too, sir. You too. Be sure to stop up in the kitchen and talk to Gristle Pete. He's a bit of a, cu he's a, bit of a curmudgeon, but, but he makes some pretty good Gristle soup, if you're okay with Gristle. Absolutely. What's in the soup? I'm Gristle. I've never had Gristle before. That sounds sounds delicious. Yeah. Hey. Does anybody else get the feeling it's there's something we shouldn't be eating in that soup? Cartilage, especially when found as a tough, inedible tissue in meat. Yeah, yeah that's Gristle Pete. That's that's Gristle. I was thinking drugs, right. but sure. Well, I'm gonna <laughs> kind of on the same page with Noah here. I'll rejoin the party. Are, are, are there, like, right. hard drugs in Faerun? It's cool. Uh, you could... I, I could invent hard drugs, but no. There's... Um, when There's Spru some stuff in the Underdark that I wouldn't mess around with. Mm -hmm. When uh, Spruce comes back, Reef has already paid for his room and asked for change, because he only has gold on it. Um, okay. Would he have gotten this, the nine silver back? He gets eight silver back, and Bogluck tells you it's because uh, there's an exchange rate fee. All right. Uh, Reef knows he's being bullshitted, but okay. <laughs> he's not going to yeah. whine because he sold him on the fear of going through the going through lizard folk territory at this time of night. Yep. So right. he's just going to accept it and wait for the others. <laughs> All right. I pay so my you have, you for buy a room. room. You also bought a room. I also bought a separate room. Yep. Okay. Did you pay for it with a silver piece, or did you pay for it? With yeah, I got a bunch of piece. silver. Okay. Yeah. So he just accepts one gold <clears throat> piece or one silver piece from you, and that's whatever. Um, yeah. And Sony, are you getting your own room as well? Sona. Sona. Sorry. <laughs> I will stick of eventually. Sony and Vanya and Masha and Spike. So. Uh, uh, yeah, and I will pay with a gold. Okay. All right. Do so I you get? Pay... Uh, uh, yeah. So you get eight back. silver back exchange rates. But I thought it was only uh, one silver. Exchange rates. Oh well, I'm not from around here. I'm sorry. I didn't know. That's fine, love. Okay. What season is Sona in right now? She's way? in autumn. Okay. So she has. Uh, like short red hair that's covering half her face. <laughs> nice. So like the picture. My, okay. my chemical romance. So like the picture. My yeah. chemical romance. <clears throat> and her hair is part flat, part feathers too. So you know it's cool. Nice. Um, Hopefully Spruce has enough for his room. <laughs> Bruce will Spruce will walk back again, man. Sprucel. Sounds so like a good the... Sprucel. So what's the... <laughs> are we getting separate rooms then? Uh, we all we each bought our own room. All right, I'll walk up to the counter. Uh, so how much was it again? I forgot. Yeah, uh, yeah. So bug luck. Uh, where are you guys at? Like, did you all move to the kitchen or? I mean, I assume we just paid while we, while the cart was being taken away to luck. But... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you just find bug luck. He's around the building, and you yeah. just give him a gold. I assume. Oh yeah. And uh, he gives you seven silver pieces back. All right. Thank you. Even fewer. 
He knows Exchange a sucker rates. when he sees one. Exchange rates. Oh, okay. well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> what a Davian money. I mean, it's good. Don't well, get me wrong, it's good, does, especially does, here in the north. But sometimes, depending on where you go, does you know, Reef, does Reef see that? Does Reef see that he only got seven while we got eight? It. You didn't say whether you guys were all standing together oh, or not. God. So oh, I'm going God. to assume that you weren't standing. Okay, you didn't that's specify. Fair. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. Yeah. All right. So, so I guess. Thank you. We'll, we'll head inside to find our rooms. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna make my way to the kitchen. Well, I think he said we have to go through the kitchen to get to where our rooms are. So. Uh, no. 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 So. So the way that this is set up, it's just like a big open courtyard, and then around, um, around beside where the gate that you came through is, and across the the, um, that other wall. Those are where all the rooms are. So they're on the ground floor and the balcony above. And then across the back wall, that's where the stables are. And then directly across from you as you enter into the gate, that's where the warehouse is, where he says the lock room is. And then upstairs from that is where the kitchen is. So it, it's like it's like a motel. It's it's like all the rooms exit from the outside. Okay. I am going to go into the wilderness. <laughs> Okay, which side of the wilderness would you like to go on? Uh, whichever one seems to have more vegetation or possibilities of... Um, I can't think of the word. Of fruits and stuff. Flora? Because so Sona does not like the sound of gristle. Gristle stew. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, then I would suggest you go across the road from the Karnath Roadhouse and you go up uh, further into the foothills. Okay. So, because not a lot grows around the Mirror of Dead Men, mm -hmm. um, but on the other side, it looks like uh, they haven't really trimmed any of the brush back from the road yet. So you can probably find like some blueberries and stuff. Go ahead and roll me. Uh, let's just say a survival check. That's gonna be a seventeen. Okay. Yeah, it's very easy for you to identify berries and blackberries and. Um, different plants and things that you can eat. You can find a very nice vegetarian salad on that side of the road. Love and uh, because you're all 17, um, there's also some small animals if you're craving meat. Nope. Can, okay. Yeah, so you make a really nice vegan salad, and uh, that's that's your dinner. Good for you. But I do observe the animals and just watch them all from right. the shadows. Yeah. They're just doing it. The <laughs> animals find you weird. They do that thing that all all animals do, right? Whenever they notice that there's like a, a being, they just like stop, they pause, they look. Would I have like any connection with wildlife? I know it's weird to ask, but I, I don't know if like my connection with the Feywild would mm. have any form of. The Fe on that? So the Feywild is nature run wild. Okay. Um, but it's it's not necessarily that you if you were in the Feywild, then you would have a connection with the animals in the Feywild. But fair this enough. is the material plane. Cool. So just just fair. wondering. Yeah, I didn't know. That's like, fair. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Um so the rest of you are going up to the kitchen then? Uh yeah. Reef was would be pretty hungry by this point, so he'll follow Spruce. Okay. So y'all go into the kitchen. Um there is there's an old human there. He has kind of crazy flyaway hair, uh, gray and white, and a uh, beard. And he walks with like a little bit of a limp, uh, like th something hurt his leg at some point, probably. And you see that he's like walking around. It, it's one of those things, kind of like a diner, where you can see back into the kitchen. There's just a, a long counter. And then there's just like tables set up everywhere, so you can sit wherever you want. And uh, he's just mumbling to himself, like, Oh, now there's more people here than I have to go and give more food. I hate that stupid mirror. Why do I have to be here? Why do I have to be here? I can't get any sleep because of all the noise from the warehouse downstairs and all that shit. And then he's like stirring this big old pot. And, and you can see it's it's kind of like a chili pot in that, it, not so much in a delicious smell way, but in a way that it seems like it's been simmering for maybe like six hours. <laughs> and, the fact that he just says the warehouse pot. downstairs and there's a giant pot. I went to a very dark place just now, and I hope to God there are no people in that pot. <laughs> no, it's fine. Uh, and and uh, I mean, gristle is tissue. 
True. Uh, he sees you come in, and I assume that you walk. In. Like, how many bowls you want? I'll I'll have one, please. Uh, one. Oh, all right. And he he just like takes out a ladle, he scoops it, flops it in. It's a little too thick to be soup, and and he just hands you that in a wooden spoon. Oh, and then he nice slaps scoop. another one, gives it to you. Yeah. Slaps another one, gives it to you. This is gonna be really oh, dumb, man. but I have a question. If I can do this. Mm hmm. Uh, Go for because. It. Uh, I am a water genasi. Yeah. I know the cantrip shape water. Uh-huh. Could I use that cantrip to make it a bit more soup-like? Uh, I mean, so what Just exactly to make does it a bit easier. water do? You can control water a body part. Yeah. You can't, control you it. Can't, uh, it's a little more precise than it would probably allow. You can't I'm create just... water. That's I'm not, uh, no, I'm not trying to create water. I'm just... There is a liquid in front of me in this soup. I'm just trying to make it <laughs> less viscous. Yeah, basically. All right. So what's what's this spell called? Shape water. I don't have my books in front of me. They got packed up a little bit ago. No, that's fine. I can just look is at it. Is it a Xanathar's here. or a player's handbook? Uh, it's in Xanathar's because uh -huh. it was. It's not. It's not in my spell Let's cards. See. It was Let's elemental see. evil. I it might be. Uh, but I think that it Shape was water. Uh, okay, you can change the flow of water. You can cause water to form simple shapes. You can change the water's color or opacity. Um, and you can freeze water. So, if you want to do any of those things and explain to me how that's going to make the soup better, I'm down. Uh, you can uh, make I it clearer, which makes you... So you can see what's in the soup. That's an option. <laughs> if you really want to see what's in the soup. I'm a little scared to ask. <laughs> no, okay. I wasn't sure how the spell worked. I've never used it before. Um, okay. I mean, it wouldn't... It, let me put it to you this way. It wouldn't thin the soup at all to do okay. shape. Okay. Uh, yeah, then Reef would just... Would just eat it. He would just, he would just okay. eat his soup. You do, see, you do see that there's a little bowl table... And you can see that there's like salt in one bowl and pepper in another, so you can just like grab it out and pinch it. Uh, no, he's it, gonna he's gonna salt it. Okay, yeah. So you salt bay the soup. Um, it's hard <laughs> to tell. Yeah. You you perfect the recipe. <laughs> we'll salt man. That's it. <laughs> um, you don't know if it actually makes the soup better. No, it, probably not. It, it's pretty okay soup. Like it's it's not good it's not good but it's not bad it's just like it's road food you know it's like the food that you eat because this is what's available and that's just kind of what it is yeah um and gristle pete is very much like do you ever watch atlantis uh okay <laughs> yeah. I think I know what this is he's is cookie. cookie he's cookie i got he's, your four he's... basic food groups bacon beans something else and lard. lard whiskey, whiskey and, and lard, lard. Yep. And even even as you even as this occurs to you, uh, even though it couldn't possibly occur to Reef, but whatever the you've watched whatever the Faerun equivalent of Atlantis is, and as you're thinking on it, <laughs> Crystal Pete is pouring himself uh, a glass of whiskey and just like shooting it back, just like tossing it back. You see him pour out another one, pour it into the soup, pour another one, toss it back again. He goes back to complaining as he's like the soup, things one around. One for me, one for the soup, one for me. You see that there's, like, meat hanging back there, but some of it looks, like, questionable. He's clearly not, like, washing down the counter after he cuts the meat. Like this is, this is a D-grade restaurant, basically. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. This is so, 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 shut down. Yeah. I'm so glad I got some fresh fruits. <laughs> we should have followed Sona. <laughs> this is really here's good, the, I have here's to the say. Thing. Uh, roll, me, roll me a perception check, just to see, like, how aware you are while you're eating your Anyone can do it if you want. And what oh, he's eating. Jesus. Uh, nine. Um, Cooper's not nine. a question. Okay, you're just trying to, to eat it. Yeah, I'm uh, trying to eat. keep it down. Yeah. You're doing your best. I just want you to know, I have a plus four Seven. perception, so I got a five. Seven. <laughs> what, what I have a plus do? five. I rolled a two. So, okay. <laughs> yeah, so you guys just eat your soup. You think that you hear a squeak in the background and a chopping noise, but <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> and, uh, uh, this, is, this is really good. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, you're just, like, right. chilled out eating the soup. So, Cooper is going to approach the soup from a different point of view. Okay. He 
knows this, this is going to be bad. Yes. So he's going to do the good old hold your nose down it just to get it in me without having to deal with all the... So here's what I want you to do. I want you to roll me. I want you to roll me a Constitution saving, saving throw. throw. All right. Yeah. Let me get my good die. Hey, Janky. Yes. Did I collect enough berries to have, quote unquote, multiple rations, or is it just one meal? Uh, you have enough that you have some left. Uh, okay. you can probably get like some travel food out of it. I'm not gonna worry too much about rations for you guys, but uh, yeah. what did you get? No. Thirteen. Thirteen. Oh, you just passed. Good. So you don't. You don't. <laughs> as as you as you down this bowl, uh, you think that it's thick enough that there's like a a build up, and you think that you might start choking on it, and then you like figure it out, and then and then you just like manage to down just, it. Just just relax your relax the throat, tongue down, relax the throat. Just. Oh. I love I love dinners where I have to figure out the food I'm eating. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know what you guys well, are talking about. This is delicious. Oh, this is a blueberry. <laughs> this is a blackberry. Bruce, I know exactly you, what I'm. Like. As you get down toward the bottom, you find that it's it's less it's even less soupy and more like a Jello with bits in. It's <laughs> it's not great. Consistency is very interesting. But... <laughs> okay, good. I'm gonna return my bowl to. Reef is gonna very low standards. Reef is gonna, 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 gonna ignore it as best he can and just eat everything he can, because he doesn't know, he just wants to get it over with. Cooper's gonna return his bowl to uh, Gristle Pete and just be like, my compliments to the chef. <clears throat> Don't you lie to me. <laughs> and he just snatches the bowl back. <laughs> Reef goes I over. just do the best wood I can. <clears throat> this is what I got. He's he's southern now, because now <laughs> it's cookie. So <laughs> Now it's cookie. Just do the best with what I got. <laughs> you want some whiskey to chase it down with? Oh, God yes. He pours he pours a flight of whiskey. Four. One for each of you and then another for himself. He's just like to this hail hole. And this he, hell just, hole. And he just chucks it back. Uh Reed is, Reed is, no is gonna hold is gonna hold the is gonna hold the glass and then slide it over to Spruce. Reef doesn't drink. <laughs> okay. And he like Spruce, Spruce is gonna like just finish the stew and be like can I get one more? You got two. You're oh, another crazy. Bowl. You're a crazy some bitch. You know that. And he takes your bowl and he ladles another one out and he hands it to you. And then, are you drinking your? Are you drinking your shot of whiskey? I'll just add it to the stew. <laughs> okay. Then I'll yeah, take like that's the hell of stuff right there. I'll take and Tom's there's... extra shot and down that as well. <laughs> cool. He'll, he'll let you knock was it, it back. Was um, it you like Cooper? Okay. So, uh, so, uh, now you're eating this stew and it's just got this, like, tangy whiskey flavor to it. You finish it off and he's just like, all right, thanks for coming to dinner. Now get the hell out of my bedroom. I gotta try to get some sleep. <laughs> Can't get no sleep, but I gotta get some sleep, so get out. This is that's, no. one of the, that's one of the best meals I've had in a while. Thank you very Don't. much. You know what? That's very kind of you. Now <laughs> get the hell out of Reef walks out of there heading for his room, 100% certain that Gristle Pete bathes in that pot of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Look, 